Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's been over a week since I've had this 4IS or 2021 F Sport bumper conversion for my 2007 IS250. I've just been so busy with work and family stuff that I just haven't gotten around to installing this bumper. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart my old 3IS conversion, test fit the new 2021 bumper onto there, and I gotta see if I need to make any modifications or changes to the bumper to make sure it fits before I send it off to paint. Once I take apart my bumper, I'll show you guys all the modifications I previously did to do the 3IS conversion. You probably don't need to do it with this new conversion, but I'll just show you what I did before. So stay tuned. To take apart the original bumper, I won't show you guys all the details of that. If you guys want to check that out, check out the video I've got linked up here. Pretty straightforward, you just got to take apart a bunch of 10 millimeters up top, a couple clips for the grill, and then on the sides there's some 10 millimeters, depending if you still have those. I think there's like seven or eight 10 millimeters at the bottom. So here's my 3IS conversion with the, the OEM aftermarket grill that fits a lot better than that black one that comes from eBay. I've got that hybrid emblem on here, which is kind of faded and worn out. I actually have a new OEM black emblem that I'm gonna be adding to this bumper when I sell it. Uh, the lip's got a little bit of scrapes on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and refinish this thing. Other than that, the rest of this bumper is solid. No ch rock chips whatsoever. The paint has never really chipped in the last four, four and a half years I've driven with this. All the edges are nice. Everything lines up perfectly, and it's a, basically a bolt-on if you have a black car. If anybody's interested, hit me up. I'm gonna actually post this thing for 900 bucks. I'm gonna include this lip, and I actually have a TRD-style lip that uh, goes around here that I never installed, so I'm gonna throw that in when I sell this bumper. The tabs and everything are all nicely fitted. On the passenger side, it's still got the original mounting hole. Over here on the driver's side, I had to actually relocate the mounting hole up a little bit just because I was scraping too much, but it's, the tab is still there, and all you have to do is really drill it. One of the things I added to this bumper was this little piece of foam that actually comes from the factory. It's like a $3 piece. Nobody ever does that, I guarantee you, but that was on my original OEM bumper, so I ordered the piece for my replacement bumper when I did this last. I'm actually going to order it for the new 2021 bumper also, just because I like my stuff OEM and I want to have all the hardware I can. So one of the things that you probably don't know either if you've never done a 3IS conversion. The OEM grill actually has a little extra piece right here that I had to trim out when I actually did this. So that's been trimmed right here already. So it looks very OEM and it has a mounting hole right here. And I'll show you on the other end when I show you the details on the car, how I ended up mounting this. And up here is this little bracket that I actually custom made. It was just a slight bend, just enough to get to that grill spot where I trimmed. So the actual grill, I actually made a clip and it mounts it right to there and then 10 millimeter into here, so it's nice and solid. I won't need this anymore for my new bumper. So over here on the car side, when I actually did the 3IS conversion, here's a few things that I had to trim down to get everything to fit. So this duct right here was a little bit too long, maybe like an inch, an inch and a half right down here at the bottom. So I actually had to cut that out. It wasn't really much. The cut started right here and it ended right there. So it was just a little piece there that was hitting the bumper, so I had to trim that out. The actual duct here that channels air into the radiator, it was about two inches too long that goes all the way out here past this plastic right here so I had to actually trim it straight across and you can see it went right along one of the ribs at the bottom so it looks also very clean I filed that down on the side one I think only the 06 maybe 07 versions you have to trim this I heard the 08 they redesigned this duct a little bit you might not have to trim it and the newer bumpers 09 and up definitely you don't have to trim it because the bumpers are a little bit different on the 3IS I actually had to trim two inches off the end here on the bash bar on both sides to get it to clear it barely touched so I just cut off two inches just to make sure I've seen other guys actually keep the whole length of the bash bar but they did like a diagonal cut like kind of a triangle cut right down that way so that way they still had at least the distance on it even though it wasn't the thickness of it just enough to clear the bumper or the fog light area so over here you can see the the VLANs I had on here and then the wire harness I actually had to zip tie it right here just because the VLANs don't don't come with a bracket like the OEM that mounts this harness on so you're gonna have to secure it like this when you do that uh, speaking of VLANs I'm actually gonna be doing a giveaway on that soon 
keep an eye out on that. If you guys saw my VLAN video from a couple years ago, I had a little drawing and contest based on the number of views and the number of subscribers I was gonna get. I've been kind of too busy to do that. I'm gonna finally get around to giving those away and doing that drawing. So for mounting the grill and everything, I ordered a 30 pack of OEM screws and these are the screws right here. These are exactly the same as the OEM screws which cost like 70 something to 80 something cents each. I got them on Amazon, a 30 pack for, I think it was 30 for 13 bucks. So it makes them like 40 something cents each, which is not bad considering they're basically the same as the OEMs. I looked at the ones I used on the other bumper, which were OEM, and it's exactly the same. I also picked up some of these Honda fender washers right here, fender lining washers. They're a little bit longer than that, but I'm gonna use this like on the side vents and anywhere where I need a longer screw. But for the most part, most of the grill and everything that's gonna mount is gonna use this screw right here. So if you guys saw my review video, I showed you guys all the different parts that's needed to put on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that little piece right here using all the screws. I'm gonna go ahead and cut apart these four bars that are used for the shipping. Before I send this off to paint, all these little molding, little pieces of rubber and plastic all around the edges, I'm gonna go and cut those off with a razor and probably file and sand those down nice and smooth. I don't trust the body shop and the painter guys to actually finish all that off so i'm gonna go ahead and do that just because i'm ocd and i want all those things to be nice and smooth so that way we don't catch any edges and peel any paint that gets on those first thing we want to do is just mount this onto here get everything lined up and get the screws on so this thing uses five screws so that really cuts into my 30 screws really quick there but it snaps in make sure it snaps these little tabs in here and probably go ahead and just put the center one first since that one's the easiest one it looks like Go ahead and cut these tabs because I need the thing to form and these tabs are blocking it. This one's almost coming off. Get a really sharp blade and this will cut right through. So that really formed it right there when it snapped in. I can see it putting stress on these little nubs that hold this thing. So just be careful when you're tightening it down that you don't put too much stress on it all at once. I may hit this with some heat just to help it form a little bit. There you have it. That came on pretty hard actually to snap it in and just be very careful that you don't break anything and put too much stress on it. I'm gonna just turn it up now. I'm gonna hit this area with the heat gun just to give it a little shape and let it form a little bit. Got the heat gun here, just set it on high. We'll go ahead and cut these other two bars off down here. Next thing I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna go and try to put the grill on. I know now that I took these bars off, the grill should fit a little bit better. So when I was test fitting this grill before I got everything cut off, it was really tight trying to get everything to form correctly because it's grill has a really sharp edge and nose right here down the center but hopefully now formed on top and those things cut off it should snap in better you just got to make sure you don't scratch too much of your plastic up uh, it's fine now that we don't have it painted yet but when you do get it painted you probably want to put painters tape all around these edges when you're trying to snap this grill in just to make sure you don't damage your brand new paint It's like this bottom part snaps in pretty easily down here. It's just the top and around the headlight corners. This little edge right here is gonna be the one that's gonna scratch up your bumper most. So here's that little corner right here that's gonna damage your bumper most. So make sure you put a plenty of painter's tape and stuff right there when you're trying to put this on with paint. Right now, I'm gonna have to scuff that up to make sure that, that it doesn't show up when I actually paint it. All the little scratches that I left behind from just test fitting it. As far as back here goes, all these clips are going in and nicely and I have access to all the screws so I can screw those down. Here's that one really long tab that they broke off on purpose. And I can see why, because once it goes in here, it's just gonna end up breaking off. Does not need it and it's probably gonna hit something on the 2IS. I can line up that screw and just start slowly snapping everything in. So 
able to snap this in over here a little bit better. It kind of helps to kind of fold the side of the bumper up a little bit while you're trying to snap it in. And then just try to get these screws in probably slowly. Don't put them all in that yet, especially when you're only test fitting. Looks like, so I got the corners, which is very important there. And then the, right here, you'll have some more back here for these, just to make sure that it gets a nice flush. And then up here, up here you have a bunch of tabs that snap in. You might have to trim some of the plastics because they're not molded nicely. But overall, once you get the two sides in, these tops are pretty much snapped in. You'll put the screws in just to hold those. So I have a bunch more screws there and then up here in the corners. So I ordered 30 of these screws thinking I had enough. <laughs> After counting all these and going here, you might need like 35 to 40 of them to actually get all the screws just for the grill itself. The two vents on the side have three or four more on each side that you need also. So you might have to order two of those packs just to be safe. Plus the emblem needs a screw. Gives this grill and this bumper all its structural strength is all these screws and the grill. Go ahead and install the side vent grills on here also just to make sure everything fits. These you have to line up the tabs over here. Plus you gotta line up the three that go through here plus the two on the bottom here. Everybody was wanting to know if there's fog lights for this or if they're ever gonna be. There is enough room to maybe put a vertical fog light here and there's actually three screws, screw mounting points that they can mount that to. So there is potential for eventually some kind of aftermarket or maybe an OEM option for a fog light to be developed. So here was where I was gonna use those Honda screws. I was gonna use the one up top here, which it, it's the perfect size for this one because I already tested it right there. It goes, it doesn't go too far in, it's just enough. And then the second hole right here, which is not drilled all the way through, so you'll have to just tap that through with the screw. And then that will actually totally secure it if these clips and everything else wasn't already securing it enough. So here we got it. You see how we mounted everything. Got those two screws right here and up here in. So it pulls it nice and tight over there. We got all these clips in to hold that. Other than that, we got everything on that side done. And then most of the screws uh, over here just for the test fitting, just because there's so many screws, I didn't want to put them in and strip any of the holes out. So right now, I can see that the fender lining, bottom of the fender line is kind of tight. It's actually getting in the way over here, so we might have to trim those down eventually. Around the headlights, it's kind of tight trying to fit into this bracket too. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these 10 millimeters up here in, just to hold it while I work on the bottom. So looking inside here, you can see right there that fender lining is hitting the bumper right there. And I'm not sure if I can get it in without uh, cutting that edge off just to get it to form to this bumper. And then the side here is gonna have to be bent more, but that thing right there is blocking it right now, as you can see. All right, so I pulled the bumper off just to see what's going on. And looks like, as you can see, when I took up close right here, this. One used to be all the way out here and it will be fine if you left it that way, if your car hasn't already been cut like this for a 3IS conversion. And then this thing doesn't even come close to hitting, I don't think, even if it was still here. So this should be good right there. Over here, we're gonna have to trim a little bit because right now, the way the bumper is, it has a really sharp angle from here to this hole right here. So I'm gonna cut it basically just straight right there so I can actually get the bumper to clear this little hump right here on both sides. I'm gonna do is right about here. I'm just gonna cut it straight, a straight line from there to this hole over here. 
and that should give us enough clearance there. It's that straight angle there because of the sharp lines on this bumper. All right, hopefully that works. I'll go ahead and put the bumper back on and see how well it clears. So I was able to snap in this side right here. I snapped it in right into the side, got it right here. Right under the headlight, there's like a bracket on the bumper that snaps right in. And that one took a little bit of massaging, but that snapped in. And it's got like this body line right here that's pretty cool. I think on photos of this, it looked like there was a bump here, but once you snap it in and it stays, it looks like it's pretty tight in there and it's a nice even line as far as the gap goes. So another thing I didn't realize until now was that the 2006 to 2008 bumper had like a lip at the bottom, which actually shifted the mounting point and those tabs up a little bit higher, like an inch or two higher. That explains why this bumper doesn't line up our tabs on our 07. So starting in 2009 up to 13, they redesigned the bumper so it's all one piece now, which moved all the mounting points two inches lower, which explains why our bumper is not fitting since we have an 07. All the holes are like two inches too far away from where they're actually at. We probably need to bend and melt them and see if we can form them into the place they need to be so we can bolt them. And here's what I was talking about, the brake duct. It lines up and it doesn't really hit. You don't really get much air through there. If you really want to get air, you might have to trim it right over here and open it up more so it actually gets ram into here. Like I was saying earlier, if I hadn't had trimmed that for the 3IS conversion and left the extra inch or two inches, it would just meet up perfectly with this grill right here and you would hide some of the fender lining. But overall, it should be fine. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Hopefully it blends in better. One thing's up top too, I thought they put this in the correct spot where it would actually clip into the cover on here, but it's actually in the wrong spot. It should have been right here. You can see the cover right there. There really should have been one right here. And then same with the opposite side over here. To match up with the hole right there, tap it into there, but that's not there. I don't know why they put these two. Maybe they did it for the convertible or one of the newer model years that has it a little bit differently. Like I was explaining earlier, look, you can see right there, the fender lining is all the way up there and this tab's all the way down here where the bumper sits. So it's kind of hard to actually get those things to line up with the factory holes to mount them in. I may try to heat this up and bend it and see if I could form like a Z shape into that hole and then mount it up. Over here too, you can see this thing's like two inches away. That's the stock hole in the fender lining and that's the hole on the bumper and the same up here. This is an easy fix. I could just drill a new hole and use that Z bracket and that little thing that goes into there to fit that properly. So on this side, I haven't snapped it in yet. I'll go ahead and just snap it in right now and show you guys how to get it in. So you just wanna basically pull it as far as you can over this way and just snap it right into those three spots there. You may want to just get a 10 millimeter and screw it right into there just to hold it. And then this thing will be popped in last and it should snap right in, you'll hear a snap. All right, I got both sides bolted up. It didn't, once I bolted everything up, you can see there's a little gap right here right under the headlight. It kind of snapped in right here, but I wasn't sure. And then we go on the other side and we have the same issue is kind of, it won't go into that bracket and it won't sit correctly right there because right now it seems like this thing wants to go out more or something. And then under the hood, you can see there's a gap right here and then there's no gap right here in the center. Usually once we put that uh, rubber gasket on, that covers up this a little bit. We're definitely gonna have to like heat this area up and see if we could get it up a little bit higher and formed higher because this center is just way too high here. Yeah, but you can see this gap. It's like a huge gap right here. One of the things I noticed is with this mold, it actually has a little spot here that kind of follows the hood line right to there. As you can see, I put the emblem on just to see how it looks. Overall, looks pretty good. One of the things I noticed though is Inside right here, you actually see the headlight on both sides. It's hard to tell, but you can see, you can see right there inside the headlight. This top area from the OEM grill actually has a little piece that goes in more that kind of blocks either side. But on this aftermarket grill, I think they cut it off to try to get it to fit better and clear the stuff behind here. You can see right here on the, the grill, there's a spot that goes down and it should have like a plastic piece that connects down. 
Other than that, I'm gonna go heat this up a little bit, see if it forms a little bit better. I'm gonna go underneath and uh, try to bend those tabs. I'm probably gonna take it off, heat it up, so I get those tabs closer to the OEM locations. So right now, when the hood is closed, right here is very close to the edge of the hood. When I get to sanding, I might sand this down just a little bit more, heat this up a little bit, just kind of press it down. A lot of times, just bending some of these metal brackets and everything will help a little bit just to lower that center part down. And then this part right here on the corner, right in these two spots is the low point right now. So we really need to kind of heat it up and lift those up. When I was talking to Scott Thomas online, when he originally did it, he said that he had to open these holes a little bit just to adjust this area, just to get everything to line up right correctly here. The headlight area right here is also not flush with the headlight line. Right here is kind of sunk in. A little bit of heat may be able to try to pull that out a little bit too. It's gonna to take some work just to get it 100% right, but if you put in the effort, it'll look really good around these edges. So I just heated it up a little bit, and if you actually just put your finger right under here and kind of pull it out, it actually lines up really well right there. This line right here actually follows the hood line, which doesn't really match with the headlight line right there, which is kind of odd, but maybe it's just because of these VLANs. Maybe when I put the Depo OEM 2011 copies, maybe those will line up a little bit better versus the VLANs, but I'm not sure. But I know for sure right now, if I heat it up and I pull this way, it actually helps close that gap a little bit and it forces this center part right here to go down when you pull these two sides out. All right, so I took the weather stripping off my old bumper just to test fit it on here to make sure everything lines up. As a little pro tip, when you're taking these off your original bumper, don't pull it from the top. I would recommend taking the bumper off and then pushing it from the bottom using some needle nose because what you have is these little inserts right here and if you pull from the top, you end up ripping all your rubber instead of actually pulling this thing out. I think I originally took this off. Uh, I what I did was I kind of wiggled it to get the little thing out of here, but it's easier just to take the whole bumper off and get it from the bottom. And then once you take it off, it should be pretty easy for you to kind of pull it on and off of this if you know how carefully. As you can tell on here, there's some extra holes that don't have anything in them. On the 3IS bumper, I had to relocate some of these to line up with the grill because I'm using a 2IS weather stripping. I think if you use the 3IS weather stripping, the holes all line up perfectly over there. And then on this particular bumper, uh, some of these holes line up uh, on the stock locations and then other ones don't. So I might have to move a couple of them around just to line up with these holes. If anything, I'll just end up drilling another hole and then just doing what I did last time if it doesn't line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect this now just to see how well it fits and lines up with the bumper. So we'll go ahead and just line up the holes. We'll start with the outside. The two outside holes on here line up exactly like it should. So pretty much most of these line up with the stock hole except for this middle hole right here. This middle hole kind of lines up. You gotta create your own. So overall, it should be good. So I went ahead and connected everything nicely, kind of shaped it so it makes it perfect. So now what I did was I just unbolted all the screws up top here because I didn't want it to force it in where it wouldn't fit right because I remember Scott telling me that he had to re-drill some of these holes just to get it to line up correctly and everything to line up with the hood. So I did that, so I just left it all loose for now. So with the hood closed, you can see the gap really eases up a little bit. And yeah, with the weather stripping and the hood closed, there's really no more gap and it actually fits a lot better. So it looks like I will have to re-drill some of these holes just to make it look better because when I push this back on the mounting, it pulls this thing way too far in and then you get a bigger gap. And then you also don't get the little rubber showing right here like you're supposed to. So I did a little bit more research and I discovered that the 2006 to 2008 use a different headlight bracket and it uses those tabs like that. 
but on the 2009 and the 2010 they made a separate bracket where the square is on either side with like a gap in the middle and I think the 2011 and up convertibles use another separate bracket too so this bumper over here is made for one of those newer models and they molded that to that shape in that bracket I've got both the side bumpers bolted in still bulges right there you can see that gap and that hole right there because it doesn't snap into that tab correctly i'm definitely gonna have to trim that to make it fit a little bit better i'm gonna go ahead and see how well this fits up here and see how much i have to open that up before i move forward so here's an example of it with it bolted down on that molding the way it came out of the box you can see right here this gap like i showed earlier but with the weather stripping it kind of closes that gap but then you have no gap here in the middle which looks kind of okie doke and then over here you got a big old gap but it's filled in by that rubber so for most of you guys that are doing this that aren't as anal or don't have the time to do this yours will probably end up looking like that i'm going to make it perfect and open up those holes and pull the bumper out more just to make sure that everything is nice and gapped and we have an even gap all around so that way it looks good before i drill i wanted to make sure i measured everything make sure all the gaps are nice and tight and everywhere I wanted and I put the cover on here just to see how well this cover lines up with the bumper because this cover provides a little bit of weight onto the seal to keep it in place and then over here you can see how far it's off on that hole because this is where that little stopper is and I have to drill that off right there right now what I when I do that I have this nice edge right here it's flush with the headlight same with this side it's flush what I'm going to do when I take the bumper off, I'm going to probably heat this up a little bit more just to get a little bit of curve in here to match the headlight. It does bow in a little bit right there, so you just want to heat that and kind of pull it out a little bit. The center part right here is perfect right now at the position it is, so I might drill that one first. As far as the rubber goes, I don't have the rubber fully in yet. It's just kind of here for testing. Once I get it finalized, I'll stretch it better so this way the whole thing is nice and even and I can fill in this gap right here. One thing I noticed on here, I was wondering why there was two holes side by side. So one hole right here is for the plug and this hole is actually for the screw that goes down so that little bracket that gives you the curve, you have to put a screw here and a screw on the other end that's covered by the rubber. Got everything screwed down. Everything lines up there with the little stoppers. All the gaps look good, at least with the headlight. We'll see how it looks when we close it. So now I've got a nice even gap there. I'm about to move the rubber here. It's shifted a little bit. Gap between the bumper and the hood is nice and smooth. Fix the rubber a little bit and everything's gonna look really good and secure up top here. So the next thing I need to do is mess with this bracket down here. So right now, here's our little problem child with that headlight bracket. My solution for this is just to really just, I'm gonna take the hacksaw and just cut this thing out right here. And really that's all that is that goes into that bracket and that should get rid of that bulge a little bit right there. Cause this piece right now doesn't even tuck into that bracket. This one will be the only one that tucks in and most of it will be inside that bracket. So here's my left side bracket. Part right here is actually popped out of my bracket. It must have broken when I had that little fender bender right here. I never even noticed it. What I really just needed to do is just have that bumper sit right into there. And this side of the bracket, really, the bumper just rests right on top of here and it sits right there. So mine, you can see, is kind of discolored right there because it's been exposed all these years just because I've always had that gap really because my fenders are kind of stretched out from being low and uh, pulling the fenders out to fit that and it really just throws off the alignment right here. So that trimming was really easy there just cutting it down with the hacksaw and then slicing it with the razor after you heat it up it's like butter once you do that so other than that i'm gonna go ahead and maybe heat up some of these and try to bend some of these 
brackets the opposite direction to see if I get it closer to the hole and make it fit. So we are able to bend those into like a little an S shape. So hopefully it lines up a little bit better with the fender liners and I can get a little clip and screw through here and have that secure. I'm gonna go ahead and finish these other two over here and we'll go test fit it and see how close we get. The ones on the outside here, they're not gonna get anywhere near the fender lining on my car. So I'm just gonna leave them as is. I might make a little C bracket that bolts into here and then bolts into the one up top if I really needed to. I relocated that hole right here to kind of get that gap right on that curve. I had to re-drill another hole right here to get rid of that little bulge. And I did the same over here. Everything's perfect now with the 2IS rubber for the hood. So on the back side, you can see I drilled that one hole. It's just barely a little bit off the hole that's already there. I had to re-drill the center hole right here because it didn't line up. This is the center hole on the grill. I had to drill it over a little bit and I did that same hole on that opposite side. So with that, everything else kind of lines up perfectly and stretches that rubber perfect. So everything lines up pretty nicely now with the cover on. Once I put the hood down, the gaps are all nice also. Over here, when I had that off and I was heating it, I just heated it up and let it cool back down and it actually lined up with the headlight really good right there. Just this little corner tip right here, I just gotta heat it again just to kinda bend it back inwards. This side, I'll probably just end up putting a little bit more heat just to get that same form right here to line up with the headlight better. Yeah, that really works. You just heat it from the back side and just let it naturally form back together and get the pressure from the grill and everything. I probably wanna do that right here too once you take that little piece off on the back side that bends it. So we close it and you can see the gaps are nice and even across the front here. You have the little rubber visible. The sides here, you have the same looking gap all the way through and then onto this side too. So that's very nice and I like it. Taking a look underneath on those little tabs that we bent, we were pretty close for the first shot. You can see like these ones right here, the inner ones, which are a little bit harder because they have like this little angle and they might snap right here. It just needs to be heat it up more and this one needs a really sharp angle to go into there and bolt up to that little hole right there. The ones on the outside were really close. They line up perfectly where they're supposed to be. I just got to heat them up a little bit more and stretch it out. You see that it's got enough distance to go up top. I just need to heat it up and stretch it that way more to get it lined up with that hole. And once I do that, I can put the little plastic C-clips and a 10 millimeter into there and that should hold. Like I was mentioning about those outer ones, there's no way to get that up there because this little spot shares that same tab right here for that compression fit. So the most you can do is maybe put like a little C-clamp or maybe like a really thick like plastic washer and a long 10 millimeter to fill up that gap to get the outside fender linings bolted in. And we have the same situation over here on the side fender lining. This is the spot where the 10 millimeter goes and this is the closest that we have for a 10 millimeter. On the 3IS conversion, there's actually a little tab that they just plastic glued onto the side here that goes over to here and connects, but they didn't do that to this one. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the fitment so far. I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up all the little minor details off camera. Join me on my next video. I'm gonna do some customization. I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the vents right here, separate them for paint. I'm gonna separate the center grill for paint. I'm gonna do all the little minor details to get everything to fit correctly on the next video. Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this pretty long video today. Uh, it was a very detailed video. I'll try to go over all the little details to try to get this bumper onto the 2IS. As you can see, it's not really bolt on out of the box if you want it to fit perfectly like I do. I like to do all the little things before I send it off to paint just to make sure everything lines up correctly and it looks OEM as hell so that nobody looking at this would ever suspect it was like an aftermarket bumper if they didn't know any better. So I wanted to make sure everything fit perfectly. If you found all this information useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel, go ahead and subscribe to your channel, turn on notifications to stay on top of all my different projects on the Lexus ISs that I have in the garage, wherever I'm doing around the house or on that Sienna. Remember guys, for all these different projects, if I can do it, you can do it. 
And I want to thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you guys next time.